Guten Tag. I hope the lunch was good. I want to start with a question. Who of you loves to travel? Can I see some hands? Almost everyone. And who loves to work? You should be if you have your own company, I guess. <laughs> and who of you actually combines work and travel at the same time? Can I see some hands? That's a little bit less. All right. So today I want to share a little story on how you can combine work and travel and how it will not only affect you as a human being, but also your organization and how you can make faster moves uh, in a global economy. And I'm talking about remote working. Who of you is already remote working? Can I see some hands from people? That's good. We're in a good crowd. <laughs> um, yeah, basically remote working gives you the freedom to choose where you are at your best. And I believe that if you use that freedom to travel or pick a location where you would uh, like to spend time, that it will actually affect you in a really positive way. So I want to sh uh, start with a little story. Um, this was like, I think about four years ago, I was working in advertising in Amsterdam. So I worked as a creative copywriter for different agencies. And this was basically my route to work every day. So 2.3 kilometers to the office, work my ass off, 2.3 kilometers back every single day. Until one day, and I thought like, you know, there must be more to life than this. So I made quite an interesting move and actually quit my job. I left my apartment and I gave my bed to an orphanage and I bought an around the world ticket. But I didn't want to stop building my career, so I created this idea, which was called the Backpacker Intern. And the idea was that I was going to trade my skills, not for money, but for room and board at companies abroad. Would it work? I had no idea. But when I posted it on my Facebook page, some of my friends seemed to like it. And when I went from Amsterdam to Bangkok, my first stop, the idea got picked up by global media. And I had no idea, so the first thing I did when I landed was connect to the Wi-Fi, and then just everything exploded. Like suddenly my little idea was on Adweek, MTV, TEDx, and many, many more. And in that first week, I received more than 750 job offers from all over the world, which was crazy. And here are a few of my favorite ones. Be our backpacker intern, get tandoori chicken in return. Internship proposition in Transylvania with vampires. And this one, do you want to be a gardener in Thailand? So if any one of you wants to become a gardener in Thailand, let me know and uh, I can hook you up because I have some good connections there. But jokes aside, I actually worked at companies that I normally only dreamt of working for. So I ended up working at you know, Red Bull headquarters in Austria. I worked at UNICEF New Zealand. Ogilvy Cape Town, in the favelas in Rio, um, and everything in between. But, you know, behind all the likes and filters and hashtags on Instagram, there are also a lot of pain, struggles, and setbacks. I've been punched in the face, been threatened to death, I've been broke twice along the way, I missed all the birthdays of my family and friends, I even missed two funerals, because I had to be on the other side of the world. But despite these downs, I have never felt so alive. I mean, this picture was taken on Antarctica, where penguins were my colleagues. And in the end, I traveled the world for two years by myself, and I worked at 32 companies in 27 countries on every single continent. And when I got back in Amsterdam, I realized that I was not alone in this desire but there's, that there's a whole generation craving for adventure. So that inspired me to research, like, how can I help more people combine work and travel? And I remember it was a super rainy day in Amsterdam, as it probably happens in Berlin as well. It was in December, and I was like, what am I doing here? Like, I'm already working from my laptop. Why would I stay uh, in the rain? So I booked a ticket to go to Bali, and when I landed, um, I found out that it was the rain season. 
So uh, I should have Googled probably weather uh, would be good. But I also stayed in a, a really amazing co-living space called Rome. It's in the middle of the jungle in Ubud in Bali. Has anyone been to Ubud, Bali? Some people? Awesome. Um, yeah, I was a bit skeptical about this concept at first because basically uh, they claim to be like this co-living space where you meet other entrepreneurs uh, to work in the jungle. I was like, yeah, right. It's just a bunch of backpackers in their shorts uh, drinking their asses off. Um, but actually, I mean, I mean, they're still drinking their asses off. But some of these people in their shorts are actually working for multi-million dollar companies or even owning them. So, like, I got to, like, learn a lot from them, and my mind was blown, like, wow, there's this whole world where people, you know, it doesn't matter where you are with the technology nowadays. And that's basically how I learned more about the whole world of uh, digital nomads. And, um, like, I don't believe that the best talent nowadays is in Silicon Valley anymore. I believe that the best talent is in Silicon Valley. Silicon Delhi, and basically, Silicon Anywhere. Because with the tools available today, work is no longer a place. It can happen from anywhere, at any time, and any space. So a few pros of like, you know, if you would design a remote lifestyle for your company, is the fact that you don't have the morning commute anymore. Like two hours in traffic, like that's, that's no fun for anyone. Um, and it's also bad for the environment if you use a car. It also lowers real estate costs because you don't need those huge office buildings anymore. Uh, that's also why you see all those co-working and co-living spaces like WeWork uh, popping up everywhere. And as third, like it actually, according to Harvard Business Review, it increases the productivity if you work remotely by 13.5%. And when I worked in Bali at that co-living space, those were my two most productive weeks ever. First of all, because it was inspiring to work with other people in that field. And second, I wanted to finish my tasks because I wanted to you know, go surfing or explore uh, the places I've never seen before. But of course, everything has its ups and downs, yin yang. It's definitely harder, harder to stay in the loop if you work uh, as a remote company. And one of the biggest problems is actually that you, it can get really lonely. That's like number one problem of digital nomads worldwide. Because you're, as human beings, we need this uh, human interaction for us to, to kind of stay alive and keep going and stay positive. Um, and, but there are solutions for that. For example, Remote Year and Unsettled are programs that help digital nomads to travel together and stay in one place to work. And the third is really sad, of course, you know, you have no more happy hours. So instead of on Friday night you're waiting and celebrating the weekend with your colleagues, you're alone at home or in a co-living space. But we actually found a solution for that. So this is our remote happy hour. Uh, we're just drinking beer. This is three different time zones. So Montreal, Amsterdam and Iceland. And the best thing is that you don't need to wear underwear. You know, you can just be butt naked and uh, nobody notices. That's one of the big advantages of being a digital nomad. But I want to share a few, uh, actually three ideas that um, if you're interested to become like a, a remote first company or you're interested to live that lifestyle yourself, uh, three ideas that you can use to implement for your business. So first of all, it's not just that you give some people the freedom to work remotely and then the rest of the team will do exactly the same what they've been doing. You have to like design it from the core and really research and study and implement all the systems that you need to run a remote company uh, all together. It's all in or nothing. So for example, we don't use email internally, so we only use Slack. That's our main communication system. Second, all of our files are in Google Drive. So if my colleague in Montreal needs uh, a logo or something, he's not going to wake me up because it's just in the drive. Everything is there, accessible for everyone. And third example, um, we put all of our projects in Trello. It's an online sort of project management system. And I can see 24-7 who did what at what time and from where and which project. Second, you know, cities like Berlin as well like, have become, uh, became so big because 
people moved to the city to work at the company, so it attracted talent. But if you think about that nowadays, you don't need to be in the same space. You know, your visa gives you, uh, instead of that, it's holding you back. We're now transforming into a skills over passport age, um, where people, you can actually now hire people that are way better than the people that you were normally allowed to hire. So, and I think that's super important, especially in a time where, you know, walls are being built uh, instead of doors being opened. And third, um, this is an interesting one. You know, of course, uh, a lot of times I hear like, yeah, but you work with different time zones, it doesn't work. Um, but that's also like being pretty much of a negative uh, person. You can also see it from the positive side. So one example, if you have, um, I don't know, you're in Berlin and you work with somebody from Cape Town, you can still start the day in the same time. Um, but what I like more is uh, you can actually run your company 24 seven. So for example, one person starts in San Francisco, uh, creates some work, puts it in Trello. Somebody in Berlin picks it up, starts working on it, drops it in Trello. And then the third person in Singapore picks it up and starts working. And what then happened in those three steps is that you basically had one single day that you worked 24 hours. So just think about how you can use that in a creative way to maybe accelerate growth, like outnumber your, your competition, and make use of those different cultures that you can now work with. Um, and I learned this by actually building a, a remote company myself. So it's called Wonderbrief. And instead of the German translation, what I just learned, that wasn't really meant to be it. Um, but Wonder comes from Wanderlust, so the urge to travel. And Brief is temporary, but also assignment. It's also underwear, but uh, we have that's li like our backup plan if it fails. Um, but basically, we're uh, like a LinkedIn for digital nomads. So we help people with 100% remote curated jobs. Uh, we have a community where people can connect with like-minded spirits. So for example, this is Pola Papadopoulou from Stockholm, Sweden. And if you want to connect with Pola Papadopoulou, you can just send her a message. I can also check out like the bucket list of Pola Papadopoulou. And we're a bootstrapped company, so we just did everything with, uh, I also like to call it bloodstrapped, so blood, sweat, and tears. Um, and we now have 2,700 members from 100 countries, which is amazing to see like all those different cultures that are you know, opening up to this new lifestyle and this new way of living and working. Um, I believe that if you want to build something successful or powerful, you need to understand the true pain points and the struggles. Um, so we as a team also, you know, constantly travel and, and experience the, the struggles that you face if you want to work and live uh, as a digital nomad. And this is a little video of my office from last year. Oh, does it work? There should be a really epic soundtrack. Is it gone? I just imagine this is a beautiful song. Can you do it again? Because I really like the bass, actually. It's pretty cool. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go. Flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio. Love that I feel. Oh, nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go. Flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio. Love that I feel. Oh, nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. Right, so this could be your office too. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know from every presentation, people only remember like four words or like one sentence. So forget about everything that you heard what I said. Um, but if there's one thing that I would like you to remember that is something that helped me a lot, uh, it's kind of like a personal mantra that I use to, to keep going. 